And he loves you not because you're lovable, because in fact, we are not. He loves us because he wants to. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, to satisfy his own self. He pours his love out on us. I better show it to you. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God so rich is he in his mercy because of in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve that you are saved, delivered from judgment and made a partaker of Christ's salvation. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating in the heavenly sphere with Christ Jesus. So now, Let's look at what happens. And in this book, if you buy this book, you'll find these charts, the trickle-down theory of conditional love and the trickle-down theory of unconditional love. The trickle-down theory of conditional love. Well, Jesus loves me, but he loves me conditionally. Therefore, <laughs> his love is based on my performance. Therefore, I have to earn his love by pleasing him. <laughs> Therefore, when I please him, I feel loved, and when I don't please him, I feel rejected. Now, we gotta stop there for a minute because here's what happens. When I fail, God still loves me just as much as he did before I failed. But if I think that God's love for me is based on my performance, then when I fail, I suddenly now feel that he doesn't love me anymore. It has nothing to do with what God is. It has everything to do with my feelings, with my weird, warped, broken feelings. Do you have any idea what it will do for you to be rooted and grounded in the love of God and to know that on your worst day, God loves you just as much as he does on your best day? And that he's not asking you to feel guilty. He's asking you to be thankful. You don't need to add your guilt to Jesus' death. He already paid the price. Once and for all, for everybody, it's paid for. God doesn't need our guilt added to the sacrifice of Christ. It's not what, it, not what we need. Well, surely it can't be right to just not feel guilty. God doesn't want us to feel guilty. He wants us to be repentant. And repentant means, sorry, God, I did that. I'm willing to turn away from it. It doesn't mean just keep doing it over and over and over and live your life in guilt. Therefore, if God who is all loving does not always love, accept, and value me, how can I be expected to believe that I'm valuable and lovable? You see what happens when you know that you know that you know that God loves you, now all of a sudden you start to think, well, hey, Maybe i am got a little value after all. Can you imagine how rotten I felt about myself after my dad abusing me all those years because the devil convinced me there was something wrong with me that made him do it? <laughs> if your peers in school rejected you, you probably weren't able to look at them and say, you got a problem, I'm really a great person, you should want to know me. <laughs> no, you probably thought, well, what's wrong with me? So then maybe you tried to be more like them and tried to be whatever you thought you needed to be to be part of the group. And we lose our whole identity and we get to the point where we don't even know who we are because we're trying to please all these people that don't give a rip about us anyway. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We live our lives to make they happy and we don't even know who they are. I hate that statement. Well, you know, they say. Well, who are they? If you can't tell me who they are, don't tell me what they say.
At least when I tell you what they say, I know who they is. It's God. <laughs> Therefore, I don't believe that I'm basically a lovable, valuable person. Therefore, I'm not able to trust other people who say they love me. <laughs> I'm very suspicious that anybody who's even nice to me has an ulterior motive because you see way down deep inside, I don't believe that I'm lovable. I've already believed that you're not gonna like me before we ever start trying to have a relationship. And so I act weird. And then I prove that I'm right after all, that you don't like me because now you disappear out of my life. Therefore, I cannot, cannot accept love from other people. I deflect it, and I try to prove to them that I'm right, that I am not lovable. Look and see how weird I am. <laughs> I believe that they will eventually reject me, and therefore they do. <laughs> so therefore, I use the world's standards, money, position, power, status, clothes, to prove to myself and others that I am valuable. I'm valuable, I'm a doctor. Whoever says, I'm valuable, I'm a janitor. <laughs> but see, you are, you're just as valuable as the doctor. The people who came and volunteered to make to let us have this meeting and keep order in here are just as important as I am. And you think, oh, no, they're not. Yes, they are. They're just as important to God. They might not be as important to you right now as I am in this moment, but they are just as important to God. You are just as important to God as I am today. You are just as important as the people leading worship. You are just as important to God as anybody else on this planet. He loves you just as much because he loves you unconditionally. I need strokes and feedback from other people, and I love this part, to prove to myself and to others that I am lovable. You need to tell me that I'm okay. Therefore, I need a fresh fix of strokes every day just to get through the day feeling good about myself. <laughs> well, Dave, you, you didn't tell me I look nice this morning. <laughs> well, I like it that Dave tells me that I look nice, but I can go look in the mirror and see if I'm okay or not. <laughs> I like it. I turned sideways this morning and thought, whoa, not bad for almost 70. <laughs> and it's not that I don't need compliments from other people. I love them, but I don't have to have them to make it through the day. And you know what happens when you don't have to have them? You get more of them. Are you here? If you don't have to have them, you get more of them. Therefore, I look to other people to give me something that only God can give me, which is a sense of my own self-worth. My. Therefore, I place impossible demands on people who do love me. <laughs> I frustrate them. I'm never satisfied with what they're giving me. I will not allow them to be honest with me or to confront me, and I am focused on me, and I expect them to be focused on me too. Just two more sections. Therefore, since I don't love who I am, I don't expect that others will love me either. Why would anyone want something to do with something that has no real value? Therefore, I try to earn their love by what I do. I don't give to people out of a desire to love them, but to be loved. Most of what I do is tied up in self. So the people that I profess to love don't feel loved, they feel manipulated. I'm really trying to avoid rejection rather than trying to build a loving, lasting relationship. Now, if I had time, which I don't, I could go through the other one, the trickle-down theory of unconditional love, and it's just 
the absolute opposite. You can get it in the Beauty for Ashes book. <laughs> I'll do a few sentences. If you promise to give me five more minutes, I'll give it to you. All right, here you go. We'll go fast. Jesus loves me, this I know, and he loves me unconditionally. Therefore, I have not earned his love, nor can I earn his love. Therefore, I cannot be separated from his love. When I obey him, he will bless me. When I disobey him, there will be consequences. He may not like my behavior, but he always loves me. Therefore, since I have experienced God's love, I know that I am lovable. Therefore, since I know that God loves me, I'm able to believe that there are people who could love me too. Therefore, I'm able to trust people who love me. Therefore, I'm able to accept the love that people give me. Man, this makes you so confident. You can go out in the world and not be afraid of rejection because you feel good about yourself. And actually, if somebody does reject you, you know right away they got a problem. Well, there's only one way to truly recover from addictive behavior, and that is to know who we are in Christ and to believe that we have worth and value because Jesus died for us. Today, we're offering you teaching that's going to help you get this truth rooted in your life. Beauty for Ashes Action Plan. It includes CDs, DVDs, and a personal application workbook. It's going to be good for you to listen, to look, and to go through this workbook and do a little bit of writing things out yourself to make sure that you're getting it on the inside of you. Take a look at this. Escape the prison of your past with the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan. With over four hours of Joyce's teaching on CD and DVD, a personal application workbook and journal, the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan will help you change your perspective on the past and live a life as God intended, filled with joy and purpose. It's available today for your donation of $35 or more. Contact us right now, 1-800-727-9673. Well, I'm issuing a special invitation to you to attend one of my conferences this year. And some of you might say, well, Joyce, I'm just too busy. Well, you know, that's usually our first response to a lot of things. But really, when we make a commitment to come, I believe that God is really gonna make a tremendous impact on your life. You know, it's very important for us to slow down and set aside time for God. So why don't you make plans to join us? We really would love to see you there. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship, life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with worship by Fused Worship. And Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. Well, I just want to remind you of the importance of speaking words of faith, even when fear and doubt tries to take a foothold in your mind. That's the way that you can fight back. One of the best ways to stop a thought is to speak something that is really what you would prefer to be thinking. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.